Your life on a daily basis must be the execution of what you have planned. It should not just be, you know, you wake up, ah, I don't know what to do. Okay, let me just go.
by a woman also had a problem. Second story. This woman had, a, had an issue. She was having a bleeding problem for 12 good years. 12 good years. And this woman, the Bible says, she kept on telling herself, she kept on telling herself, if I can only touch the garment, if I can only touch the garment of this man, I will be healed. And she went and touched the garment and was healed. Second story. And the third story, when Jesus left all these two people and sorted out their issues, he was met by two blind men. Two blind men met Jesus. And they asked him, heal us from our issue, blindness. Jesus asked them, do you believe that I can do that? Do you have that revelation of me that I can do that? And those people said, yes, we believe we can do that. And Jesus healed them. Hallelujah. Now, out of these three stories, the Lord is going to open our eyes to see how we can make things happen. My message this morning is titled, Make Things Happen, or How to Make Things Happen. Beloved, things in life will not going to happen like that, especially things that you want. Things that you want to see in your life will not just going to happen like that. Is They are not just going to happen because you want them to happen. They are just not going to happen because you desire that you want them to happen. They are not just going to happen because you say that they should happen. There are things that you need to do if you want to see things happening in your life. If you want change, if you want things to happen, there are things that you need to do. These three stories that we have just read now, three different people have three different issues. And all of them, they wanted things to happen in their lives. And they went through a process. And that process made things happen in their lives. Beloved, there are challenges in our lives. You see, life, if you don't want to act about it, life will act about you. If you don't want to do anything about life, life will do everything about you. If you want to do anything about what is happening, everything about what is happening will be done in your life. When they will say that there is economic recession, you will feel it. When they say that they will be taking people out of work because of a, a, a economic a restriction, because you don't do anything about it, it will happen to you. When they will say that Corona is fake, if you don't do anything about it, it will happen to you. When they will say that nowadays, you know, the statistic of South Africa has shown that people are divorcing in the first two years of their marriage. And if you don't do anything about it, it will happen to you. You will be divorced. Because it is the trend of life. Because it is the trend of the natural. So these three people, or these three categories of people, they had things that they needed to, they wanted to see happening in their lives. Life was taking them in the direction that they didn't want. Life for them was taking a shape that they didn't want them to have. Beloved, I believe that there are people here, their life has taken a shape that they don't want to see. Their life is taking a pattern. It's going in a way that you don't want to go. It's taking you somewhere that you don't want to go. You better do something about it. You better do something about it. Because if you don't do, it will happen just at the normal, natural trend. Hallelujah. So this morning, my aim is to teach you, is to tell you, is to share with you, is to understand how we can make things happen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Beloved, in the natural, if you want things to happen, first of all, you need to have a vision or you need to know what you want to happen. Things cannot happen if you don't know what you want to happen. So you need to have a vision. That is in the natural. In the natural, for things to happen, after having a vision, you need to have a plan. You need to plan how you're going to make those things happen. 
You can't just say that I need a house and don't have a plan how you're going to get that house. I need to be married. You don't, married. I, don't know, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Plan is important. And the third thing in the natural, you need to execute your plan. Let me tell you. If you live a life of just um, improvisation, you will suffer. And unfortunately, many Christians are living life of improvisation. Accident. Things are not happening by design, but they're happening by accident. I bump to this woman and then we end up to be together and then we get married. I bump to this man and then we end up to, you know, to get along and get married. No! Things in your life must not just happen by happening. They must happen because they are the execution of your plan. Am I talking to somebody? Things must happen because they are the execution of your plan. Your life on a daily basis must be the execution of what you have planned. It should not just be, you know, you wake up, ah, I don't know what to do. Okay, let me just go. I will take it along the way. Many of us are taking things along the way. That's why we are reaching where we didn't want to reach. Because we are just going like that. You as a child of God, you must have a plan. Hallelujah. A plan, and you must execute your plan. And then in the natural, you need to do a follow-up or an evaluation of what you plan to do. If you plan to do something, after a certain time, after a frame time you've given to yourself, you must check. How am I going? Am I still going in the same direction? Everything is doing well? Or I have to, I have to rectify certain things. And the fifth thing, is actually to rectify after you've done an evaluation of something. This is how you succeed in life. Beloved, I've said it, I'm going to say it again. The Lord Jesus said, the children of this world, they are wiser than the children of the kingdom of God. I told you what is wisdom is about. You see, wisdom is not, you don't get wisdom from school. Wisdom comes from two things that we spoke about last Sunday. Wisdom comes from the knowledge and the understanding. When you have knowledge, knowledge does not necessarily come from school. Knowledge comes from life, from whatever you went through through life. Now, that knowledge, if you understand it and apply it in your life, it will make you a wise person. So wisdom, it is knowing how to go about the things of life. That is wisdom. So a wise man usually is not a person who has been to school or been to the university. He's an old person there who has been through a lot. Then you go to him. Then you have problems. Then you speak to him. Then he tells you how you can go about that problem. Why? Because he has been through a lot of knowledge and he has understood a lot of things. Understanding, he put them together, he brought knowledge. Hallelujah. So you as a child of God, God is expecting you and me to have knowledge, to have wisdom more than the people of the world. Because we have the knowledge of the word of God. And we have the understanding of the spirit of the Lord. That brings us to become wise people. So, it is important for you to understand as you are following Jesus Christ, you don't only inquire about the life of Jesus. You have also to inquire about the principles of Jesus. Because the life of Jesus is different from the principles of Jesus. Many of the people of the world, they have inquired the principles of Jesus where they don't have the life of Jesus. He drinks alcohol, he commits fornications and all those things, but he's prosperous in his business. Why? Because he knows the principles of business that you are ignoring. Because he knows the, 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 the secret of prosperity that you are ignoring. The life of Jesus is that presence of God that you know that if I die today, I will go to heaven. But many people will go to heaven still, they will be poor in this earth. They will remain poor in this earth. They will not going to be successful life, but yet they will enter heaven. So my aim is to help you to be balanced, to have the life of Jesus, and to have the principles of Jesus. 
The life of Jesus will help you to enter heaven. The principles of Jesus will help you to be successful in this world. Amen. If you do not have the principles of Jesus to know, you know, Baba knows that it is by giving that you receive. Yeah. They know how to give. They know how to do all those things. So people of God, you need to learn that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I told you about how you can make things happen according to the world. That we can also do. That we need first to have a plan or vision. Sorry, we have to have vision. We have to plan for that vision to happen. We have to execute that plan. And we have to do a follow-up or an evaluation of that plan. And we have to rectify whatever we need to rectify. Good. Very good. But the Spirit of the Lord made me understand something I'm going to share with you from the story that we read now. The Spirit of the Lord made me understand for all those steps to happen, there are things that you better make sure that they happen inside you. Those things that, may, that happen inside you will help you to go through those five steps that you have learned. And if those things, they don't happen to you, you might go through these steps and still not see success. Hallelujah. Three things need to happen in you. And today we'll speak about one. And by the grace of God, we'll under Sundays, if God give us life, we'll speak about other things. The first thing that needs to happen inside you, you need to keep telling yourself something. You need to keep telling yourself something. We'll come back. And the third, the second thing, the second thing that needs to happen to you, you must know or you must have the revelation of Jesus Christ. You must know how do you call Jesus. You must know who is Jesus for you. If you don't know who is Jesus for you, there are many things that are not happen in your life. Because there are things, for them to happen, it requires you to know Jesus. To have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Of things will happen to you according to how do you see Jesus Christ. Amen. And the third thing that you need to happen inside you, it is your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Remember, Jesus will not going to do anything anymore because he did it all. Now he's resting. He said it himself. It is done. The is done. He said it is done. So if you say that it's done, it means that it is done. So if you go and request something from Jesus, don't think that Jesus will crack his head and, his head and look to make it for you. <coughs> there is nothing that Jesus is making for you. There is nothing. Jesus made nothing for you. He did it already. All he is doing right now is telling you, stretch your hand of faith, take it. Because it is available. That's why Apostle Paul understanding that he said, we have been blessed yeah. with all kinds of blessing, but in the spiritual realms. Yeah. Where you need hand that can go there and take whatever you need. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Now let's go to these three things that need to happen in us before us to go into the five steps of making things happen. In reality. You see, I spoke about those things in one minute. You need to have a vision. What do you want to happen? I want to be healed. Yes. What do you want to happen? I want to have a house. What do you want to happen? I want to get a job. What do you want to happen? I want to have a free. I want the fruit of the womb. That is a vision. That's what you want. It is clear in your mind. But how to go there? Okay. For me to get this, this is what I'm going to do. Good. And from today, I'll be doing what I decide to do for me to reach there. Good. And then after six months, I will evaluate. Where am I? According to what I said that I will do. Oh, here I am. Okay. These things that are missing. Okay, let me work now on those things and rectify. And then you go again. But, if you go that way, and you don't tell yourself certain things, you're not going to make it. Because for you to reach that vision, you must first believe that you can reach that vision. Yes. If you don't believe, you don't have the power, you don't have the energy, you don't have the fuel 
Believing on what you want is the fuel that makes you reach what you want. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there's this woman. With bleeding problems for 12 good years. She went seeing a lot of doctors. She saw gynecologists from everywhere. I believe from what the story is reporting, from what our brother Mark is reporting about this woman, this woman was a wealthy woman. Because the Bible says she went and saw many doctors. She saw them all. And the Bible says she wasted all the money that she had. She had a vision. Healing. Hello. Amen. She had a vision healing. Mm -hmm. And she had a plan to go see doctors. You see what I told you? She was still having the plan. She went through these five steps. She said, I'm going to see a doctor. What I need for me is money. She got money. And she went. She executed the plan. The Bible said, she went and saw many doctors. And she reviewed the plan. She revaluated the plan. She saw, am I healed or not? She's still not healed. She went again to the second one, to the third one. The Bible says she wasted all the money. There is something that was missing. Something was missing. The Bible says now, I don't know how, she heard about Jesus Christ. She heard about Jesus Christ. Probably they told him Jesus is a healer. But now she had a problem. You know, in Israel, if you are having a, a woman and you are in your, on your period, or if you are bleeding for any reason, you cannot come in contact with people. You must be out of the city. You must remain there. So she had a lot of things that was blocking her life, that was uh, preventing her, you know, to even go and receive healing from Jesus. She was in a very difficult situation. The Bible says, I like it, verse 21. Can somebody read for us in the Passion Translation, Matthew chapter 9, verse 21? I like it in, 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 in uh, the Passion Translation because I want you to get one thing there. Yes, it says what? She said to herself, mm. if I only touch this cloak, I will uh, be healed. She said to herself, <laughs> she was saying to herself, she kept saying to herself, if I can only touch. You see, when the say keeps saying to herself, it means that she did not say herself once. No. You see, for you to make it in life, you must talk to yourself not once. You must yeah. keep on telling yourself. Yeah. Keep on telling, I will make it. Yes. I will make it. Yes. I will make it. Yes. Maybe the first two times you tell yourself that you don't believe. But the more you're still telling yourself, you are feeding yourself with the fuel, yeah. with the energy that's going to motivate you. This woman now said she kept telling herself. What was she telling herself? That's also another issue. You must tell yourself. Remember, what you tell yourself is a fuel. Whatever you tell yourself, and let me tell you, as you are seated there, you are the result of what you have been telling yourself. Yeah. Where you are is the result of what you have been telling yourself. Even if you did not realize it, but what you are, what you have achieved, what you have produced, is what you have been telling yourself. All of us, we tell ourselves something. We have been telling ourselves, I will make it. I will make it. Or we tell ourselves, I will fail. I will fail. This one, this sickness, I will die. This one, I will die. Oh, that. You are telling yourself. This one, ah, I, I can't, I can't. It's too bad. No, I can't, I can't. You see, there is a, a philosopher who says that man discover himself in front of the obstacle. Yeah. The day you will face that situation, then you will know what is inside you. Yeah. Therefore, you cannot fail without trying. Or you cannot fail until you try and you fail. Amen. Many of us here, we are failing without trying because of what we tell ourselves. I can't, I can't. Sin, I can't. Ruzani was sin, I can't sin, I can't sin. Until we push her there, she starts singing. Yeah. Then she realizes that she can sing. You see, there are things that you are failing them 
Because you keep on telling yourself that you're going to fail. I did challenge. He said, it's a lost sight. It's a waste of time. Why do you choose to tell yourself those things? Because what you tell yourself is a fuel that makes your vision to happen. When you keep on telling yourself that that vision of mine is too big, it is impossible, I can't make it, it is difficult, it will be difficult. Because this is what you keep on telling yourself. I praise God because this woman, she kept on telling herself, Mama, that version that you need to ask, the personal translation. Wow. There is a couple of words that I did not find there. Can you find us maybe King James? There is a version that, is, that says, the woman said, if I could only touch his prayer show. Which one? Which one is it? She kept which version is that? Uh, passion. passion. She kept telling it. She kept. If I could only touch this prayer. So if, oh my goodness. If I could only touch what? This prayer. Show. Show. If I can only, I can, I will be healed. Look what this woman was telling herself. The Bible said she kept on every day. You know, when she looked, Jesus passing, they said, no, because of, I'm um, dead. You know, 12 years, people knew her. He said, ah, hey, don't come here, don't come here, don't come here. People knew her. She couldn't go. She was just telling herself, if I can only the first day, but I can't. Look at that, people will tell me. It, the second day, she said, if I, I can't. But the Bible said, she kept on. Yeah. Kept on. Say what? If I can only touch his prayer show. Can you put for me the image that I sent you? I sent one image in the room. You remember it? Okay, put it on there. You see, I need to explain to you this so that you can understand. You see, Jewish, they were not just dressing anyhow. Jewish, after dressing, they were putting on top of everything what they call prayer show. Prayer show, which is also called Dalit. Dalit is a piece of tissue in which the word of God is written that they were wearing for them to enter in prayer. So for them to pray, they would wear there is the Dalit or the prayer show. They would wear this thing, you see, at the, the garment, you know, the fringe of the garment is this one, this part. They would wear everything and then it would be showing outside there. Okay? All the Jewish were wearing that. Especially those who are fearing God. Because this was showing their belongings to God. It was a sign of nobility. It was a sign of, a, of proud that they belong to the living God. And when they have to pray, they want to, before them to wear it, they will pronounce a certain prayer. After pronouncing that certain prayer, they will put it on their head to create an intimacy with God. That is why they were wearing that. So when they will cover their head, they will have that intimacy with God and speak to God. With that, that they call it prayer show. A show is what the ladies are covering. You know the show, what the ladies are covering themselves. But that one is a prayer show. So they will cover themselves and be in intimacy with God. But also, it was a sign of the power and authority. So Jesus was wearing the prayer show. Just having that, he was on the ground. Men, Jewish men was, were, were wearing the prayer show all along the day. When they wake up in the morning, they dress, they'll do some prayer, wear the prayer show, and walk around. Of course, Jesus, as a person was respecting the word of God, he was wearing that prayer show. Now, this woman, he said, she said, she keeps on saying, you know, many people thought that the woman went to touch the, the cloth of Jesus. No. She didn't, she didn't go to that. She knew that where power will come is in the prayer show. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yeah. So if, if you read other version, they just said she touched the garment of Jesus. No, she not touched the garment. She touched the garment of the prayer show. Because she knew that if I touch them, it is the symbol of authority and it is a symbol of power. That's why when he touched Jesus, Jesus said power went out of him. Because she touched on the place of power. You must know where to touch Jesus in your life. You must know where to touch Jesus in your place of power. 
She keeps on telling herself, if I can go and touch this pastor. Amen. And she starts telling herself, telling herself. One day she starts telling herself, and then she says, I'm going today. I'm going today. No matter what, I'm going today. Somebody says, Oh, but people will know that you are in your bleeding problem. I don't care. Today. You see, when you keep on telling yourself something, you will end up believing what you're telling yourself. Yeah. Yo, I'm ugly. When the 
call you by the man. Maybe that man wanted to marry you. Call you, Mama, can you? I'm angry. You want us to mock me? You keep on telling yourself, and now you are believing that you are happy. Don't tell yourself anything that is in the contrary or what is opposite of what you want to happen. Don't tell yourself anything which is against what you want to see in your life. This woman said, I'm going to touch the garments. She kept on telling herself that. She went to touch the power of God, the garment, the talit, the prayer show. Hallelujah. Control what you receive from outside. Because whatever you receive and you start telling yourself will determine your personality. Oh my God. Amen. You see, your personality is the sum of things that you receive from the environment and you still, you've been telling yourself, you kept on telling yourself. You see, your personality, you are a shy person. You know why you are shy? Mm -hmm. There is something you have been telling yourself. That I am not good enough in front of you. When they call you, you are shy. Because you have been telling yourself you are not good enough. God who created you, he created you good enough. If you are not good enough for me, there is a man who find you good enough for where you are. Yeah. He will find you good enough with your height, with your whatever, with your whatever. I told you my story. I've been excited so many times about my skin color. You look like a man. You are too dark. Hey. Now I started looking about number two. Am I going to make it? Will I make it one day? Until I reach the point to understand, to start telling myself, I'm okay the way I am. I don't need soap to make my skin to become, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, clear. No, I'm okay the way I am. You are short. I'm okay with my shortness. Yes, yes. Yeah. By the way, I discover I'm not short. I'm very tall. Yeah. <laughs> because my ribs, that was taken from me, I was surprised. When I saw my ribs, my wife, she's tall. Wow, I'm not sure. Here is my ribs in so <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. <laughs> David in a Psalm 42, verse 11. I want us to have that. Psalm 42, verse 11. David is talking to himself. He's saying, My soul, do not be discouraged. He's talking to himself, don't be discouraged. People give to him and say, David, you're not gonna make it. You're gonna fall down. Everything, you know. People came around and said, she said to herself, no, 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 not this one. Psalm, Psalm 42, verse 11. Psalm 42, verse 11. David was talking to himself. If you read the, the Psalm of David, you will find out that David used to talk to himself. Now, he's talking, he's talking to himself. He said, why are you downcast? Oh, my soul. Do you have a meeting with yourself? Do you speak to yourself? In the moment of trouble, in the moment of difficulty, when everybody tells you that it is, it is, it is finished with you, you're not going to make it, it is over with you. Talk to yourself. Keep on telling yourself, my soul. Are you downcast? Why so deceived within me? He told, hey, my soul, what's wrong with you? Put your hope. You is talking to the soul. Please keep on talking. Put your hope in the Lord, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. Yes. David was talking to himself, and it's in Psalm 103, verse one. Psalm 103, verse one. The service is telling him so. Is so. In this moment of trouble, what you should do is say, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord my soul. Amen. All my innermost being praise his holy name. Beloved, things are not happening because you don't tell your soul. You don't tell yourself. Because you don't know what you're telling yourself. It is so dangerous to tell yourself negative things. In the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 19 to 21, somebody was killed because he told himself wrong things. What you tell yourself, if they are wrong, they can be the cause of your death, the cause of your hypertension. How many people had CVA? You know CVA? Hmm? Stroke. You know, people are having strokes because they tell themselves, hey, it's finished with me. I'm done. Oh, where am I going to get the money to pay? The, oh, the blood pressure goes up. Oh, this part is gone. The Bible says, and all I said to myself, 
then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Beloved, there are people here are in trouble because they're telling themselves things. We fell into sin because we tell ourselves things. You see, when people fall into fornication, it is not necessarily because of the people they are seeing. You know, I used to, I used to condemn, no, people are falling into fornication because ladies are wearing short stuff or they are showing their boobs and whatever, whatever. Then the Spirit of the Lord said, no, it's not about it. Every woman who's there, you know that she has boobs. Don't you know? Every man who's there, you know what he has, even if he went closed. But why nothing is happening? Because you don't tell yourself anything. But the moment you see the boobs and you start telling yourself, these boobs are nice, these boobs are nice, you will go after them. Are you getting it? The moment you start telling yourself things, I can see a person, even though naked, but if I don't tell myself anything, nothing will happen. You, reaction is happening because you accept something from that person and you start telling yourself, yo, it must be nice. Yo, with this color, she must be nice. Yo, with this height, she must be nice. You are telling yourself. It's not the person who said this height. Hello. Yeah, the way you are quiet, I can see you can see something. <laughs> Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord knows everything. That is telling us everything. You fell because you start telling yourself things. You follow that woman because you, when you look at her, you start telling yourself, mm, this must be nice. This must be nice. I must go. Let me go. Because you start telling yourself. But if you tell yourself, mm, this woman, she's somebody's woman. I'm a married man. I'm a married man. I have mine at home. I'm a married man. I'm a married man. You go away because you keep on telling yourself. You keep on telling yourself wrong stuff, wrong things. I just go for that. Hallelujah. Remember, you can't stop the devil from inspiring you things. Come on. He will inspire you. But you don't have to accept everything that is inspiring you. I understood that some many times we are we are incriminating others. The spirit of the Lord says it's about the, it's not about others. It's about what you tell yourself. Amen. When somebody passes, he didn't say that follow me. When you follow oh, Pastor, you know, we were not there. This lady, she, she was so so sexy, so attractive. Sexy and attractive is what you choose to tell yourself. If you choose to say that this is a soul. A soul to be saved, a soul to be saved, a soul to be saved, you will be looking at that person as a soul to be saved. If you look at a person, there's a girlfriend to be, there's a girlfriend to have, there's a boyfriend to have, there's a boyfriend. Because you keep on telling yourself, you'll end up there. Choose what you keep on telling yourself. This woman said, if I can only touch the carpet, what do you keep on telling yourself? This foolish man was telling himself foolish things. He died. What we tell ourselves, if they are not good, they can kill us. People are sick. People have hypertension. People have angry. People are sad. You see, I don't know if that happened to you. You wake up very well, you are happy, and then suddenly there is a thought that crosses your mind. And you're like, hey, yo, hey, ah, hey. See, you kept on. Hallelujah. 
Your words that you keep on telling yourself. Tell, tell them. Repeat them until you believe. I told you that what you tell yourself will create your personality. What you tell yourself can be different from the reality. I'm not saying that what you tell yourself will always be equal to the reality that you are seeing. When David said this, I will not die, he was about to die. The reality was telling him everything that you are dying now. The reality he was facing, he was showing him that there is no life. There is no hope. But he chose to tell himself hope. Listen, brother, I can tell you everything about hope. But if you don't tell yourself, nothing will happen. Until you start telling yourself. Until you tell yourself, I will get healed. I will be healed. Then you'll be healed. This woman start telling herself, I will go and touch. I will go and touch. Tell yourself. David said, I will not die. I will proclaim the goodness of the Lord. I will live. Although the reality was completely different. Your reality of life sometimes will be completely different and against your confession. Listen. Your confession will change your reality. Oh, yes. Do not let the reality impair your confession. Yes. Yes. Do not let the reality influence your confession. Rather, let your confession influence your reality because you have the word of power. Yes. Yes. That's why God said, Do not curse. Yes. Because He knew that if you curse, it will happen. Yes. Why only believe that when you curse, it will happen? So it means also when you bless. It shall happen. Amen. Amen. Bless yourself and still cursing yourself. Stop telling yourself those nonsense that you tell yourself. Look at me. Look at who in the who made me. Look at me. Look at me. Hey. Yes. Because you keep on telling yourself you'll be cursed. Tell yourself, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the first and not the last. Tell yourself, tell. Keep on telling yourself until you believe that. You see, when you receive things from the outside, you must have a triage in your life. When you go to the hospital, they do the triage of patients so that they can attend to people according to their emergency. So if you come there because you have a small laceration there, and then somebody comes there who is having a heart problem, even if you came before that person, but because of the triage, they will attend to that person first because of the emergency that is heavy. You need to have a triage in your heart that needs to triage the kind of word that you tell yourself. Don't tell yourself any kind of word. Don't tell yourself whatever you receive from the outside. You need to triage that and you cannot tell myself this. You are a child of God. Why such a bad confession? You always confess bad things inside yourself. You always confess evil things inside you. Then it will happen because you are confessing it. Have a triage. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, the last part, the Bible, say, the Bible says, Out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the fullness of your heart, fill yourself with good things so that you may start telling yourself only the positive word. You know, the new age, this is, is a false belief. But they have something that they've developed. They call it positive mind. According to them, if you always tell positive things, the positive things will happen to you. They are right. You see, the principle. They've taken what? The principle. They don't have the life of Jesus, but they have the principles. If you keep on telling yourself. So they believe that. For things to happen in your life, you must start telling yourself that. You start telling, telling, telling that things happen. If you are sick, say, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, until that thing will disappear. They believe that. And they are telling their people, principles, beloved. Fill yourself with positive words like this woman. And keep telling yourself those good words, those good words. Those positive words that I will make it, it will happen. I will be okay. You'll get healed. I will get healed. My family will be okay. I will keep telling yourself. Don't tell yourself once. Don't tell yourself twice. Keep telling yourself. In other words, continually tell yourself. At every time, repeat it to yourself. The more you repeat it to yourself, the more it will be take four. Let me finish. I remember. A couple of years ago, <clears throat> sorry, we had a, a brother 
who gave us this testimony. Today is a pastor in Namibia. He had, I think I shared it here once or twice. He had a tuberculosis of the spine. He was still at high school. Tuberculosis of the spine. The spine was fused. So he couldn't bend. So he became a Christian. Before, before, them, before him to become a Christian, because parent was having money, so he said they went everywhere. They saw Sangomas, they saw doctors, they saw many people, but that problem couldn't be. So they told him, your back is fused, you're not going to be able to bend. So for him to take something, he must, you know. Then he said, he found the scriptures in Isaiah 53 that says, by your wound we are healed. He said that became his word. He was telling himself day and night. He said he wrote it in his books. He wrote it in the wall. He wrote it in everywhere. He wrote it everywhere. He was repeating that. He kept on telling himself, by your wound, I am healed. 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 He said he was not healed on the first day he did the confession. Not either on the second day or the third day. He said one day, they were busy in present worship. As they were worshiping God, there was a Bible on his feet. And he said, he couldn't dance properly. And he said, this Bible is disturbing me. You know, instinctively, he said, let me take that Bible, put it there so that I can dance properly. He bent, took the Bible, and put it there, he continued to dance. And then he realized, oh, I'm just bent. Just bent, no? Just bent. Let me try it again. And he bent again. Then he bent again. Then he starts shouting. Then everybody was like, what's going on here? The, his praise and worship became more than the praise and worship of anybody, anybody else. Yeah. Then they asked him what's going on. He said, I'm healed. I am healed finally. What I kept on telling myself finally has happened. What I kept on telling myself finally has happened. Keep on telling yourself until it's happened. Keep on telling yourself until it's happened. This woman, she kept telling herself until it's happened. Rise up on your feet so that you may change your confession. You may tell yourself new things. You may tell yourself positive things. Stop telling yourself those negative things. I'm too old. I can't get it. I'm too old. You know, every time I want to try, you're like, hey, I'm too old. But I'm too old. No! You want to try? No, I can't. I tried yesterday. If yesterday it did not work, it doesn't mean that today is not going to work. Amen. Today is a new day. Amen. There's a new brief that is briefing today. Amen. If it did not work yesterday, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work today. Amen. Rise up on your feet. I want you to ask yourself, what have you been telling yourself? What have you kept telling yourself? That have been blocking your life. That have been tormenting you. This morning I want you to change your confession. And it is possible. Take some couple of seconds, minutes, to examine yourself. You have goals. You have plans to reach those goals. But there are those that are plans you don't even believe in. You don't even tell yourself that it will work. How do you want it to work? If yourself, you don't believe in it. You want to become an engineer, but you don't even believe in it. Tomorrow you want to be a married man, a married woman, but you don't even believe in it. You keep on telling yourself, yo, I have too much mistakes. How is it going to work? Look at yourself. The negative confession that you've been doing to yourself. Things it's affecting your mood. 
and it will affect the outcome of the day. Believe in your confession. Confess, confess. Your son will be okay. Confess it. Your son was not making it well at school. Stop doing the confession and be telling yourself, hey, I lost this child. Tell my son will be okay. My daughter will be okay. My wife will be okay. My husband will be okay. It will be okay with me. The Bible says, say it is well with my soul. It is well with my job. It is well with my career. It is well with my ministry. It is well with my life. It is well with my health. It is well with my wealth. It is well. Still speak to yourself. Tell yourself. It is well. 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 I keep on telling myself that it is well. This bleeding woman kept on telling her son. She kept on telling her son. Lord, I keep on telling my son. I'm telling my son. I will not die. I will live. I will live. And I will testify the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Now let's pray together. Let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I've been the witchcraft of my own life. For the wrong confession that I've been telling myself. Lord, I cancel by the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost every wrong confession, every evil confession that I release over my own life over my own interest in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let every consequence be removed by your mercies be removed by your mercies in the name of Jesus now I confess and I tell myself and I will keep telling myself it is well with me. It is well with my soul. It is well with my life. It is well with my project. It is well with my future. It is well with my career. It is well with my ministry. It is well with my marital life. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. 